Good afternoon. Welcome to the rededication, the anniversary birthday party of our towers. The plaque up there. Our very good uh, friend, Franco Wells, is the one who designed and had uh, paid to have these towers built. The roundhouse is also his creation. And we have a um, very special guest today, Pam Walker, who is Frank's great-granddaughter. And she will be speaking. Um, so we'll have a couple speakers, and then we'll have a ribbon-cutting ceremony, and then we'll have some refreshments, and then enjoy the rest of the fair. This is Pete Steiner, our president. Say a few words, and only a few words. <laughs> Our <laughs> monthly meetings. <Elbow> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, uh, to our senators and Congress people, and to our friends. Uh, this is a special time. Uh, these towers represent uh, quite a historical landmark here in the area. It is for the people of Franklin County what all this was done for, and. Mr. Wells did a beautiful job both on this and on the roundhouse at the time of building. And I'll tell you, the view when you go upstairs on the third floor looking down over the whole fairgrounds is unbelievable. And, uh, and we working hard to try to keep it uh, so that everything is uh, looking nice all the time. But uh, the history of this property is something that will stay with the generations to come and hopefully the young people will see what we have here and continue on. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back. I'll keep it in a few words and happy birthday to the tower. Mike? Thank you. Um, before I forget, I work for Buckley Healthcare Maintenance Department. Um, our administrator, David Boddy, right over there. He's here today. But la in last night's parade, Buckley Healthcare took first place in their division. And this is part of the float. They were very generous to donate the cake that was on it and all this. And I decorated up, got the, went over and stole their blue ribbon back. <laughs> so a um, few people I'd like to introduce. Mike Nelson, our first vice president, Gary Seeds, second vice president and birthday boy today. <laughs> Su Suzanne Hunter, treasurer, Peg Sonier, our secretary, and a few other scattered ones out there. Wave your hands from the... Representative Mark. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay, yeah. you introduce them. Okay. I just... Representative Mark, is it? Okay, Representative Cool. 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 cool and Commissioner LeBeau, Agricultural Commissioner of the State of Massachusetts. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting us to join you today for this celebration. This is terrific. Um, I'm Steve Kulik. I'm State Representative for the 1st Franklin District, and it's my colleague Paul Mark, who actually represents the town of Greenfield. And uh, it's really a thrill to celebrate uh, this gate and the history and what it represents with this fair. Uh, Franklin County wouldn't be the same without the Franklin County Fair and this gate is its physical symbol that along with the roundhouse probably more than anything else that really uh, gets the blood going when you come to the fairgrounds and go through these gates and you know you're going to have a great time and you're going to celebrate the agricultural history past and present of Franklin County that means so much to the quality of life to our economy uh, and everything we enjoy about living here so uh, we're really pleased to be here to help celebrate, uh, to bring greetings from our colleagues in the legislature, and to congratulate you on uh, celebrating and maintaining this fair and this gate, um, because it, it does mean so much and represent our agricultural heritage. So uh, thank you. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Paul Mark, who's going to make a presentation on our behalf. Thank you, Representative. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the Franklin County Agricultural Society in recognition of the 100th anniversary of our main gate towers. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this eighth day of September 2017 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, 
Signed by Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House. Offered by Representative Paul Mark, Susanna Whips, and Steve Kulik. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> and, thank you. And as, as you know from civic, as you know from uh, your civic studies in school, yes. there are three branches of government, the legislature and the judiciary, and the executive branch. And so we're really uh, pleased to also have with us today uh, a good friend and colleague of ours who's a tremendous advocate for agriculture in the Commonwealth. He's been doing a super job for the last three years or so, uh, Agriculture Commissioner John LeBeau. Thank you very much, Rick Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm, I'm delighted to be here representing Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, um, as you celebrate a hundred years uh, of the of the gate here, um, I've had the privilege of uh, getting out to fairs the last three summers. Pretty soon, I think I'll hit. I've hit just about every one. I I was uh, had a great visit out here last year. Mary showed me a lot in the museum, <laughs> and uh, I had a great time. So we decided to come back today, um, but. I will tell you, at all the fairs I've been to, you've got some architectural features here that we just don't see at many of the other fairgrounds, particularly the gate and the roundhouse, so you all deserve to be uh, very proud of that. Um, as Rep Kulik mentioned, as the drops start to fall, um, <laughs> he, he mentioned agricultural heritage, and that's so, so much of what our fairs do, is, is connect people to agriculture. We live in a country where, unfortunately, right now, there are many folks who honestly believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> and uh, somebody did a poll and found some numbers about that. So we, we count on fairs as one of the primary means to educate folk about exactly what agriculture is, how, where the food really comes from, and uh, nothing does it better uh, than the Franklin County Fair. So again, congratulations from, from the governor and the lieutenant governor. and. Uh, I look forward to walking around today. Thank you very much. Okay, also here is um, our Industrial Heritage uh, Museum President, Jim Terrapian. I'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Well, how nice to see such a turnout. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for coming, especially um, the Wells family members, welcome home. Um, and I'd like to thank Fred and Mike and all the um, fair committee for, you know, bringing this to light. This uh, and putting together the agricultural history and the industrial history because there's a lot of overlap there. And uh, thanks to people like Frank and a handful of other men for creating things like this and really putting Greenfield on the map. And uh, just as a personal note, as a machinist myself, I could say that, you know, we strive in the trade to, to be like Frank and, and men like him. Um, they were really um, down to earth, shop floor managers that really knew how to run a business and also showed how they love their community. So thank you all for doing this. It's really nice. Thank you. So I'd like to invite Pam Walker up now, and she's going to talk about her great-grandfather. Thank you, Mike. Hello, everyone. It's a really an honor to be here, and what I hope I can do is convey a little bit about uh, Frank O. Wells' life and um, what, he, what he meant to the community of Greenfield. So there are going to be some facts and figures and a little bit of information about GTD, Greenfield Tap and Die. So it's really an honor to be here to represent the Wells family. I'm a great granddaughter and um, I want to tell you the story of how he grew up in this area and um, how he became the craftsman and the visionary that he became in the precision tool industry and the legacy that he left in Franklin County and in Greenfield. I really wished I'd known him. I wish I'd been able to sit at his knee and listen to stories, but he died the year that I was born. My roots are, are very deep here. My, um, my maternal grandmother, my mother, all my aunts <coughs> and uncles on um, the maternal side all grew up here and I celebrated every Christmas of my life until uh, I got married 
um, right uh, on a High Street or Grinnell Street, you know, on houses that, that F.O. Wells had built. So a little bit back in time, F.O. Wells, he's a descendant of an old American family that had English roots and traced the lineage back to France, to the De Welles family, De Welles, in the Vaux area of France. I never knew that. His was the story of an apple falling not far from the tree. He was a child of the Deerfield Valley. His mother, Lucina Lily Wells, and his father, Elisha Wells, were born in Hatfield in uh, 1820. Elisha was a blacksmith and a cutler and a drop forger. And he had a reputation of um, a man of great industry and great integrity. Lucina, Lucina, his mother, was a woman of strong character and greatly influenced the intellectual and the moral development of her two children. She had two. Um, Frank Elisha, known as F.E. in my family, F.E., was born in 1844 in Buckland. And 11 years later, F.O. Wells, Frank O., whom I will call F.O., as he was called in our family. Um, he was born in 1855 in Shelburne Falls. When I moved to Shelburne Falls, I had no idea my great-grandfather had been born there until I did some digging. F.O. early on, he loved the discipline and developed the discipline of hard work. I remember at his father's knee. He also loved to study books on flower culture, hygiene, and shop management. He became interested in all things mechanical, as well as being a great reader. He went to the local public schools and then to Peter Sam Academy. He was really self-taught. He was a self-made man, self-taught. There was no engineering school, right? No graduate school of engineering for him. He learned about iron, metal, and tools at his father's knee at the forge. When he was a family, his desire to handle tools was so great that he saved all of his pennies to be able to go out and buy his own set of tools. Remarkable. That was an early indication of his passion for tools and inventing things that would later be manifest in the businesses that he helped to create. F.O. and his older brother and nephew, Frank W., Frank W. Wells, worked closely together as partners and they uh, made their mark early on in the uh, precision tool industry right here in Greenfield. And F.O.'s first association with Greenfield Tap and Die the, the, the trade was when his dad became one of the first salesmen for Wiley and Russell, a tool maker we all probably have heard about. F.O. began as an apprentice at Wiley and Russell, working for a dollar a day after he finished working at a local paper mill. He was an enterprising young man and he worked very hard. In 1876, when F.O., Frank Orson Wells, was only 21 and his older brother, F.W., or was 32, the two brothers with only $1,000 formed the Wells Brothers Tool Company. You can probably see the sign on Hope Street of the Wells Tool Company that still is there, right? The factory was, uh, the first one was along the Green River and then it expanded to North Street. They invented and began to manufacture their own, own type of dye under the name of Wells Brothers, the first adjustable dye called the Little Giant. This represented great progress in the screw cutting tool business. In 1899, they moved their shop to Sanderson Street. And soon these taps, these little giant taps, dies and screw plates were sold in many countries of the world. F.O. got married to Alice Graves of Waitley in 1880. She died several years later after giving birth to their only child, my grandmother, Dorothy Wells. In, in April of 1912, the big event happened. Wells Brothers Company merged with Wiley and Russell to form Greenfield Tap and Die. That was a big moment for Greenfield's history. And they had three plants. Plant number one on Deerfield Street, remember that was raised to make room for the arbors a few years back. Sanderson Street was plant number two, which we pass when we go to the Franklin Hospital, now Bay State Franklin. And the last one was in Galt, Ontario. So GTD really put Greenfield and Franklin County on the map, as Jim was saying. So what happened during World War I? GTD was very busy. It uh, gave GTD the opportunity to produce the tools needed in the war effort, and it greatly expanded. FO was really a visionary and had a deep understanding of the tool industry. One major accomplishment I think he, he um, had under his belt is that during World War I, he saw the needs for standards for screw threads 
very technical, throughout the industry. He advocated for the development of these national standards, which he presented to a governmental commission in Washington, and they were adopted. So this helped all the manufacturers and the users of precision tools in the US. In World War I, the Allies looked to the skilled craftsmen in Greenfield for the essential taps and dies for threading. Also, there was a need for accurate gauges to guarantee absolute accuracy in mass production of interchangeable parts for tanks, trucks, and the guns for war. The U.S. Army ordered the production of tens of thousands of gauges from GTD. Amazing. So F.O. became known as the Gauge Man. And I don't know the real story there, whether he designed the gauge or what, but maybe Jim has some light to shed on that. During World War II, GTD operated 24-7 to provide these gauges and threading instruments needed to produce war munitions. And that's when the uh, number of employees peaked at 3,500 at GTD and all their plants. So it's really very special, I think, to remember that the hands of the craftsmen and the machinists of Greenfield and Franklin County were responsible for these very top quality products that enabled the Allies uh, to win World War II. So a little bit about uh, Franco Wells as a person. Uh, he clearly was an organizing genius, but beyond that, his main hobby was gardening. He loved the land. He had a large farm in Worthington. I remember my mom telling me stories about that farm. As part of that farm, he built a roundhouse as a dining area for the family, a smaller version of the one that was constructed earlier here for the fair. He loved exercise and loved, uh, lived a pretty healthy life, lived to be 85. As we all know, he was very public spirited and believed in his community. And he helped to improve Greenfield in many ways. His love of nature and the outdoors and for growing things inspired him to create beauty wherever he could. We know he was active in the uh, Agricultural Society and was president of this fair for some years. And he was instrumental in making the grounds of the Green River, C Green River Cemetery, right over there, um, more beautiful. Some people have called it the most beautiful cemetery in all of Western Mass. He helped to open a golf course and he helped with be to beautify the grounds of the then Franklin County Hospital. Many of you know the Weldon Hotel on High Street the former Weldon Hotel. It's now the Senior Center and Weldon Apartments. That was built by F.O. Wells. He designed it and built it, not with his own hands. And it was called by many Wells Folly. I grew up learning that that's Wells Folly because the unique and innovative construction using concrete was thought to be bizarre. But it stood up, it's still there today, right? We can't know exactly what his vision for this majestic and inviting tower archway combination was, but it seems clear to me that he meant it to symbolize um, an invitation to all to come and really appreciate the agriculture of Franklin County, which he really loved and appreciated. So I've always been inspired by his generosity, and I think he can be an inspiration um, for all of us with his deep love for Greenfield and the community around him. So thank you, everyone. Well, we're going to do that too. Okay. I got a little gift bag for Pam. Oh, wow. Just <laughs> some things I thrown together. Wow. This year's poster. Oh, wow, that's ugly. Um, one of those uh, kids' uh, brochures. Wow, thank you. Uh, our schedule for this year. With, mm -hmm. And everything's got a gateway on it. Um, my children. This is a book they put out for our 100th and 50th, and there's a couple articles with both about the gateway and uh, the roundhouse that mentions some Frank Wells in it. <laughs> uh, it's too late now, but here is our premium book, can't turn anything. A hat. Oh, thank you. Water bottle. That we sell out every year, I think, of these at our uh, information booth. And a cup. And inside the cup is, I was with the Scouts for many years, and one year I planned a camporee up here called the Rainbow Camporee. The Scouts went to different stations and got a different piece of yarn to put on 
a thing so at the end but this is uh that's beautiful so. wow. that's lovely. No, there you thank go you so much and thank you very much very for coming here. okay now uh we'll shift over a little and we'll do a ribbon cutting ceremony and um have some light refreshments i want to thank everybody for attending here and the rain held off yes it did okay so thank you very much and we'll just have a little ceremony now here. So in honor of uh, Frank O. Wells, who had the, the vision and the generosity to donate the gate. Donate it. And um, in honor of all the people who worked for the Franklin County Agricultural Society over the years to keep the fair really strong, um, we dedicate, we rededicate this beautiful gate. Okay, she works. Oh! <laughs>